Hello, welcome to the third in our series of uh, revision videos looking at indirect taxes. Let's just spend a few minutes thinking about ad valorem taxes. So how does an ad valorem tax differ from a specific tax, which is what we've been looking at so far? Well, an ad valorem tax uh, imposes a tax on a good or asset depending on the value of the product. And the tax is normally, usually expressed as a percentage. Best example, VAT, value-added tax, is charged at 20% on most goods and services offered for sale. Obviously, there are different rates for certain products, but 20% added VAT. So here are three examples of ad valorem taxes in the UK as of January 2021. All of these things, of course, can change when the Chancellor makes his tax decisions each year. VAT is the biggest single indirect tax, and that's taxed at a standard rate of 20%. There's also something called insurance premium tax, and that's a tax on general insurance, car insurance, home insurance, putting insurance for your Labrador, pet insurance. The main tax rate there is actually 12%. That's an ad valorem tax. And another good example is stamp duty land tax. It used to be called stamp duty, now S-D-L-T. Stamp duty land tax. So a tax on the value of housing and land transactions. If you buy a property less than £500,000, you don't pay any stamp duty. But up to £925,000, it's taxed at 5%. If you're buying a house, uh, you know, over a million, million and a half, a million pounds, for example, you're then going to pay at 10% for that next bit, rising to 12% for anything above £1.5 million. So stamp duty, the tax rate rises, the percentage goes up as the value of the land or the property increases above £500,000. So there's three examples of ad valorem taxes. This is the crucial bit, I think. How do you show an ad valorem tax in a diagram? So here's a nice, simple, step-by-step -step way going through the, the analysis. Here's our initial <coughs> situation, supply pre-tax and the demand curve. A An ad valorem tax the tax goes up, it's a percentage of the price, percentage of the value. So at a low price, the tax is fairly low, but if the price goes up, the tax paid goes up in absolute terms. And this is what happens to the supply curve. You see, at a fairly low price, if you're adding 20%, if it was five pounds, if you add 20%, you're adding another pound of tax. If it's 200 pounds, you're adding another 40 pounds of tax. So the higher the value, of the um, product and the higher the percentage the greater is the change in the gradient of the post-tax supply curve let me just illustrate this for example if you went for a very high percentage tax the curve will become steeper okay high percentage tax the curve becomes steeper if the rate of VAT comes down the percentage comes down the tax the supply curve becomes in the sense not quite as steep it becomes flatter OK, so here's our VAT, our ad volume tax, initial price is P1, Q1. As a result of the tax, there's the tax per unit at that price. Percentage of the price is added on. The equilibrium price in the market will go up because costs have increased. Supply has shifted to the left. So the price rises from P1 to P2. Quantity contracts to Q2. We move up the demand curve. Uh, of course, the, the, the tax has to be paid. So the key thing, again, as we talked about in the last video, is the extent to which the supplier is able to shift or pass on the burden of the tax to the consumer. So the consumer will pay the increase in price from P1 to P2, shown by that lovely shade of orange there. The producer in this situation will have to absorb some of the tax. They have to pay some of the tax themselves, shown by the shaded area. The total distance, P2, P3, is the tax per unit at equilibrium. In 2020, uh, in autumn of 2020, the, the government cut VAT on the hospitality sector. We know that you know, hotels and uh, leisure resorts and restaurants and things badly affected by the coronavirus pandemic. And the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, cut VAT in the hospitality sector from 20% to 5%. Let's just finish with this little idea. A 15% fall or sorry, 15 percentage points change in VAT. Did that lead to a 15% fall in prices? So if hotels 
decided to pass on all of the cut in VAT, would that lead to a 15% fall in price? Have a think about that. We'll go through the answer in a second or two. Well, the answer is not quite. Although that is a 15 percentage points fall in VAT, if you think about it, consider a hotel room costing £200, including VAT. Then we work out what the hotel room would cost with 5% VAT. So let's take the room, £200. You then divide by 1.2 to take off the 20%. And then you add on 1.05 to add on the 5%, and that gets to 175. A 25% fall in the price, but that's a 12.5% reduction in VAT. Now, crucially, I mean, hopefully that cut in price will have stimulated demand at a difficult time, but it's worth bearing in mind the impact on the price as you cut VAT. What we'll do in the next video is ask this question why might governments be justified in indirect taxes what are the arguments for and against using taxes as a form of intervention so we'll build some key evaluation arguments into the next video